Tottenham 2, Manchester United 0. And we get our first win in our first home league game of the season. What a day to be alive, guys. What a day to be alive. Super, super happy for the three points. Makes that Brentford away away draw not so bad indeed. Four points in two games, not a bad return. And given it's the first, you know, it's the new era of the Ange Postacoglu era, really. Uh, and it couldn't have started off in, in a better way. Um, guys, let's go through the, 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 the game itself. For the first 45, um, I, I did go on to the, to the Tottenham away watch along at half-time and gave my thoughts in the first 45 minutes. What I had said, guys, is the, 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 the few concerns that I had. First and foremost, the, the, the Bissouma, Saar and Madison trio for me in that midfield was the best part of not just the first half, but also the second half. But in the first half, it was really that part that was working well. Listen, guys, Romero today at the back was attentive. It was leadership quality-wise. He wasn't rash. He was attentive. And I felt that the shaky moments that we had in the back four were covered, a lot of them, by, by him. So he's really, really taken on board what's been asked of him. And today, guys, with the blocks, he was superb. Um, the only concerns I had in the first half was I inverted uh, full-backs, particularly on our right-hand side, where... They, both both Porra and in in uh, in the second half with Emerson, they all have a problem receiving the ball facing our own goal, facing Vicario. It always worries me when they receive it. They're not quite comfortable there, but maybe that will require a bit of work. But look, <laughs> going forwards, both Porro, especially Porro today, and and uh, uh, and Udoji were superb. I thought Davis and Emerson were, were were just as good coming on, and I felt you know that they took on board the kind of football that Angels play wants them to go forward, wants them to make those run between our opponents, centre backs and full backs to receive the ball from the winger when they're out wide. So definitely going forward, we're a lot more comfortable, especially with the full backs, than receiving the ball from from the goalkeeper or from our centre backs with, with not knowing what's happening behind them, you know. That's a real midfielder's trader's mark. And I'm not sure right now if they have it. They may they may develop it in, in games to come with confidence. Uh, but right now, that's the only part that concerns me. In the first half, I thought um, Decky was holding the ball a little bit too much. Was probably looking a lot of the times for the dialogue, looking into Richarlison, trying to get into the ball with him. Sometimes something what he used to do with Kane was to hit the ball to Kane and then and then Kane holding it up for the one twos and Decky goes again perhaps with a shot or a cross with a son uh, diagonally going, going you know making his runs to receive that ball off Decky. Um I felt the same with Son, you know, it, 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 it was a lot better today, Son, than the than, than Brentford game, no doubt about that. He had a really brilliant chance um, towards towards the end, of the, the end of the half, I believe it was. Um, could have done, could have, should have done better, for sure. But do you know what? <laughs> Richarlison, still, Richard is everything... When we try and get the ball into him, back to guard, the ball goes it, almost as if it goes through him. Martinez had him in his pocket the whole first half. And that's the one thing that, for me, didn't quite work. Trying to get the ball into feet back to goal, not quite strong enough. Martinez was nicking the ball off him. When he was getting um, hustled a little bit, we'll go to ground. Um, the only couple of sh moments that he had was when he was picking up the balls in the wide areas. But through the middle... Unless we get Madison closer to him, like a second striker that can play a lot closer in supporting him, I just don't see if the lone striker thing's going to work for him moving forwards. Um, but look, Bruno Fernandes had a massive sit out. That was a big moment in the game. Uh, in the first one, the ball go, great ball knocked into him. He's headed it over the bar with just a keeper to beat. That was an absolute sitter. But following that, we had some great opportunities with Porro's shot hitting the bar. And then uh, 30 seconds later, when the ball's trying to, you know, Decky gets in the bar and he's looking, he's looking who to give it to. He's looking for Richarlison and then somehow managed to ricochet off, of off, of off a defender and hits the post and Richarlison couldn't get the rebound. 
But moving on to the second half, guys. Uh, the first 15 minutes of the second half, we blew them away, man. Um, Saar scoring his goal. Another great run from midfield. He made one in the first half when he got the ball on the other. I like, didn't quite get connection. This time he does get the connection and he hits it in the roof of the bar. Brilliant timing. Yes, he got a little bit lucky with the cross deflected off Martinez. But Saar was there. And you know what? You, as a midfielder, when you make those runs, you've got to be there. And sometimes it does fall for you. Gets the connection in the roof of the, in the, roof of the net. Nothing that Casemiro could do to try it. Well, he was the closest one to trying to close him down. Um, and from then on, there was chances after chances. And Anthony did hit a, hit a post. And wide, you know, again, the ball was played into Richarlison in our own half. Back to goal. Gets intercepted by Martinez, who knocks the ball out to Anthony on his favourite left foot on the right-hand side. Opens his body up, takes the shot, hits the post. And the 53rd minute, again, Udoji, another chance while he goes on a run, received the ball, didn't get the connection that perhaps he wanted, but it was the most he could do with a toe poke. Onana makes the save. Um, what I did, you know what I did pick up, and I made a note of this on here. Rashford picks up the ball on the right hand side, and before, uh, in about 55th minute, and just before any kind of move or counters can start, the foul comes in. Um, it was a doji and they were taking it in turns and I thought it was really clever how they were doing that. I don't know if you guys picked up on it. I thought it was really, really smart. Um, they wouldn't get in Rashford getting this sort of flow whilst he's picking up the ball in the wide areas to try and go, bang, the foul would come in. Didn't get any yellow cards. It was stupid of a dog. I think in one of them we got a yellow card for holding the ball a little bit too long. Those are the kind of yellow cards that now has happened. It happened with uh, Wan Bissaka, I think, in the first half and, and Udogi. Picking one up for a similar thing, which puts them on a firing line. And that's why in the end, you know, Davis, and we'll go on to Davis as well, comes on for him. Otherwise, the doggy would have, would have stayed the whole, the whole game. Um, 57th minute, Casemiro. A ball comes into the box. Big, great timing for Casemiro. Gets a real good header to it. Brilliant. Top right-handed save by... Uh, Vicario, who slowly, slowly, after the Brentford game, now the Manchester United game, he's growing in confidence, getting a couple of saves. Um, Gary Neville in the commentary said that, you know, he did make it, it did make, it almost made it for the photo, for the photographers. I thought it was a really good right-handed save to tip it over the bar. He made one at the end, albeit was Varane was offside. Another great time header by Varane again. His hand was there. So, slowly, slowly, guys, Vicario is showing signs that he isn't quite as dodgy as we thought it might be during the pre-season. Um, but this is what I said in previous videos, guys. The more the two centre-backs play with the goalkeeper, the two centre-backs, and perhaps like the Basuma in the number six role, or Saar, whoever comes in, that, 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 that quartet there, once they get the understanding going, they will come the solidity, the solid part of our side. And that would help the goalkeeper, knowing who the two in front and the one in front of him are going to be the permanent fixtures. And he will grow in confidence. The understanding will grow in confidence between the two centre-backs and the guy playing in front. So for me, you know, these two games have told just that. Kept a clean sheet as well, guys. Massive. We haven't been able to do that in how long? We was conceding goals left, right and centre during pre-season. And another two we did against uh, um, against Brentford, you know. And, and today against Man United, we've got a really good attack. We kept a clean sheet. Um, Son had, again, had a massive chance to round it up where he he, he, he was like almost like a little, little run. I think he'd come on, Son, slot it away and then it gets blocked by Martinez. And then on the 65th minute, Eric, um, Eric Ten Hag sees that his midfield completely getting bullied and bulldozed by our midfield, makes a triple substitution with Sancho, Delot and Eriksen to try and shore things up. And they do stop the rut for a, little, for a little while. They do stop that dominance, but they're not quite in the game to try and change it around. Davis and Udo Davis comes on for Udogi and Perisic for Richarlison, who I didn't like his body language coming on. I didn't feel that, albeit it might have just been in the moment because at the end of the game, he was happy. Um, in 73 minutes, Saar and Hoiberg come on. And in the end, Solomon and Emerson came on for Deki and Poro. Makes me question what's happening with Los Celso. But perhaps we'll look into that 
in 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 in, you know, in the next occasion. Um, five subs were made. Los Celso didn't appear against Brentford again tonight, uh, and again tonight makes me question what future he has at the club. And on the 83rd, with just a few moments, uh, 10 minutes or so after he had come on, Davis makes that same run that Udogi was doing between left, uh, their right back and their centre back, slips in behind, didn't get the best connection, but it was enough. It also, in addition to Martinez's touch, to get that second goal under the south side, making the crowd roar with happiness, knowing that now oh, nothing can take our, t our three points away. Um, my man of the matches, I did have three names written down here in front of me. Saar, Bissouma and Romero for me were our best three players. But in the end, I have to agree, we've got Gary Neville said, Bissouma for me was an absolute monster. I love Romero's command and presence and calmness at the back, and particularly in the first half, um, mopping up a few of the situations. And Saar for his goal, as well as his performance, I thought was really, really good. Um, and the last and not least... The last but not very least, I have to give up the give props to the fans in the stadium today. A massive, massive performance was absolutely backed by the 12th man in the stands. And I thought you guys that were present there in the stadium were brilliant today, inciting the team on, pushing them on to the three points. Today's game was huge. We had to get the points. There was a lot of worries leading up to this game. But you know what? Today we held our own. Today will give a lot of confidence moving forward. Sure, we can't get carried away. But you know what? For today, at least for today and this weekend, be happy with the three points against the big team that Man United are. We move on. Enjoy the win, guys. Have a smashing weekend. And as always, forever always, it's come on, you Spurs.